Hello guys, welcome to Expertizer Academy. Today we're going to see how to create a very simple subassembly using subassembly composer. Okay, so this is a very easy to use to, to software and uh, this is a very simple tutorial. Uh, to start with, you go to file and then click on new and then it creates a new file. And uh, to walk you through on the UI, this is your toolbox. If you don't have any of these elements, you can see go to view and you can turn on and off all these items. And sometimes if you messed up with the view, you can always restore the default view and then it comes back to the same view here. So on the left side, we got the toolbox. You can use a search to search a particular tool. It's not a pretty big list. You should be able to get what you want. And uh, the first one is the geometry. So you can add the geometry elements here. And the second is the advanced geometry. So this advanced geometry need the basic geometry in most cases. So without that, this wouldn't be able to do the job by itself. And then auxiliary as well, the same way it is like an object, which is depending on this one or aid to create an additional point and things like that. So that's what the auxiliary stuff which would do. And um, similarly, if you got workflows, workflow is basically organizing all your actual geometry objects uh, in place. And uh, so it has got flowchart. That's the very first thing that you would create. And then sequence. Sequence is like group of geometry put together. Let's say if you're creating a box so that you can put into a sequence. And then if you're creating another layer or another box right next to it, you put it as another sequence. And decisions. False or false or true or false or uh, if you got a specific value between two two percent slope to eight percent slope and uh, based on the user has chosen you can go into one direction and things like that so, and then switch so if you got multiple options not just two then you can go for it so this decision is for two choices and this is for multiple choices and then miscellaneous you can set the output parameter um that is like whatever the value you calculate you can display it back to the user and uh, defining a variable um so you can define a variable and you, you can use it within your entire package so that means anytime you get a new value new calculated value you can assign it to that uh, variable and you can use it in a different place and similarly uh, you can set that value value using this um, tool using this item and then uh, set a marker point this is where your subassembly connects to another subassembly and then reporting a message back to the user okay so let's get started so first what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag and drop a sequence sequence is basically um, just a collection of uh, items together so it's not necessary you should do this here so you can see uh, I can directly add my point and then add a link I can keep doing this uh, but the sequence just makes it a bit more organized so later down the track if you're gonna um, add a bit more stuff then you know you don't have to go and move all of them together and things like that so everything goes inside a sequence so that's that's basically it so I'm gonna add a sequence and I'm gonna call this one as um, let me rename it call this one as lane and uh, I can double click inside so to go into the sequence. Click on this. Now it say on the top it shows a flow where I am in. So first is a subassembly and then the flow chart and then the lane. So now inside the lane, uh, so that is basically the sequence. I can start adding stuff. So I can say I can add a point and um, so for the point you can add the properties you can update the parameters you can do all that kind of stuff you can see the preview here uh, so let's go step by step so this is going to be my point one i'm going to build a rectangular shape which is basically a very simple lane um, so the code is going to be is like say crown so it's going to be on the inner side so it's i'll put it as crown and uh, leave that to x and y value so that will be zero that will be the origin and then uh, i'm not going to add any link to this one here and uh, I can click on this little uh, checkbox to display the uh, codes that I have written. So the codes has to be within double codes, I guess. So crown. Here we go. So the code appears up here. And if you have entered any comments, you can display the comments here as well. Uh, generally, I don't display comments, so it becomes a bit crowded. All right. So I'm going to add another point. And this is going to be, let's say, ETW. And um, so now I have to specify uh, this is like say this point is some distance. Let's say this is the crown. Another one is the ETW. So this is a width in between. So I need to specify the width. Uh, so for this case, I'm not going to get any user inputs or anything like that. This is going to be like a very simple exercise to get started. So here um, I can choose it. The point two is actually traveling from the origin, which is P1, which is what we set it as the origin. And then the Y value, the X value, I'm going to set it as two meters. So let's fit it to the screen. So you can see that's my crown. That is my uh, P2. 
and y value I can actually I can say that this is going to be 0.5 so then you can see the point moves up and down so if you want to specify sort of like a slope let's say if it wants to come down I can say a negative value 0 0.02 and then it comes down okay and then uh, so I want a link between them that means a line should be drawn between them um, so let me add a link so this will be like add a link from the point I'm going to click on this one so I'm going to use this method for now and later I'm going to show you how to add a link as well uh, this is from p1 I have to choose p1 which is the same and then I can choose a link and uh, so the I can give a link to the name as well and then I can give um, a code to the link as well so the advantage of the code is later you can use the code to generate strings or uh, make them into different color line types and a lot of these things and um, so that's done so next one is I'm going to add another point and this point is you know you can make it calculations from the origin or you can make it from p2 so I'm going to choose from p2 so all I have to is just drop it uh, let's say 2 fit to screen so it's way too high so let's say minus point two okay fit and then you can see it right underneath so now I'm gonna add a link here so it's added a link and then I'm gonna add a code for this one this is gonna be again ETW so the code is added good and then add one more point and uh, this is gonna be crown 2 let's say we'll just call it as crown 2 and then um, so this is gonna you see like I can calculate from p3 or I can come from p1 so I'm gonna say it's gonna come from p1 and then it's gonna travel point minus point 2 so it's just underneath the p1 pretty easy and uh, this time I'm not gonna add a link using this option so I'm gonna choose link as a separate item and then uh, I'm going to type this one as uh, lane and then um, so starting point will be P1 and ending point will be P4 you can see that's done um, so let me finish a lane from P3 to P4 so let me add that P3 to P4 so that's done so I'll add one more link and I'm gonna this is gonna be lane as well and um, so this is going to be from p1 to p4 so now you can see we have out at all and only thing is there is a code that is missing here for this lane so we'll add okay so that's done so fit the screen and then you can see it you can zoom in zoom out and that's what it is so next thing is you want to add a shape into it so you can get some volumes um, so I'm going to add a shape and this is going to be lane as well and uh, so now I have to add links into it so you can add it manually or you can choose this little box here and then you can click on the enclosed shape if it is not closed properly this is not going to work so when you click on this it automatically adds L1, L4, L3, L2 and then it fills in with a with a shape code as well so that's done beautiful and then I'm going to give a name to my subassembly I'm going to call this as lane test so we make sure that we get rid of this after we're done with this one and input parameters and uh, side uh, we can say it's like say left side that's a default side it goes in and you can give a separate name to display this information rather than side you can say direction whatever you want to have target params we don't have anything super elevation we're not doing anything on this one don't touch it um, so that's all for this one um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this file as uh, let's save it into our exercise folder so you guys can get it give me a minute let me save this one okay so this is gonna be lane test okay so I'm just gonna save this good that's saved let's go back to civil 3d 
wait it until loads. Okay, so I'm going to select one of these surface. Mm -hmm. Let me get the surface file. All right, so now what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to choose bring in the tool palette. So control three is a keyboard shortcut. So we got the tool palettes here. So I'm not going to create a separate tab on this exercise. We'll do it as a separate one. So let me go to quick reference, right click and then import sub assemblies and then choose this one to pick the source file. So the source file is in this location. So let me bring it in. So I can add it to this tool palette, no harm. So that's done. So you can see it doesn't have an image. We haven't done that. So now I'm going to insert it into the drawing. So now for that, I need to have an assembly. So I'm going to click on create assembly, uh, whatever the name could be, and then click on this one. And then it opens a property box and then click. Unable to run the assembly code. Here we go. That was weird. <laughs> Never had that seen that era before. All right, so that's done. So now if you want to change the direction, you can do that. And then it puts it onto the other side as well. And if you want to keep connecting more, easy. And that's your marker point and you can keep doing it. All right, so that's how you create your simple sub-assembly. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, put it onto the comment section. Thank you.